vamos a dar eh, paso a la siguiente presentación. Eh, thank you very much for your presentation, Luis. Now uh, we will listen Dr. Bernard Rovitza, but I first will read a brief summary of his biography. Um, Bernard Rovitza is a PhD student at the Ilmenau University of Technology in Germany, where he was a researcher in 2018. He is also the CEO and co-founder of ABEC GmbH, a company based in Vienna, Austria, which offers video and web quality monitoring solutions and consulting services. From uh, 2014 to 2018, he was researcher at the Telecom Innovation Laboratories of Deutsche Telekom AG and Technical University of Berlin. He received his diploma degree in computer science from the University of Vienna, where he worked as a research assistant from 2009 until 2013. His research interests are quality of experience for multimedia applications and user behavior aspects for web TV services. And well, also Bernard did not include it in his biography. It is important to point out that he is a very active collaborator of the ITU study group 12 service standards are developed. Um, Bernard, uh, Bernard, welcome again, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you for the introduction and the possibility to speak. Um, I just have a small organizational question since we only have 10 minutes left officially. Should I uh, try to be very short in my presentation or do I have 15 minutes? Miguel, I would like to ask, uh, can I have 15 minutes presentation time? Uh, uh, yes, yes, uh, Bernard. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, can you share your yes. screen? Okay. So, um, in my talk, I would like to um, give you an idea of some of the challenges that you have when trying to monitor the quality of service and especially quality of experience. Um, so I would like to start by telling you about quality of experience, what that means, um, and then present you a, a short selection of challenges that you typically encounter when trying to monitor QoS and QE. And two of these are encrypted streams and then the need for proper QE models. Um, and then I will give you an example of an application, um, how we measure QE for video streaming and how Uh, we um, created a setup to predict YouTube quality based on uh, a one measure, namely the internet bandwidth. So I want to start with quality of experience. Um, this is a, not a new concept, but uh, it's uh, still uh, not very widely known to, to some. Um, and for us, it's um, quite different from quality of service Um, meaning um, quality of service is about the provider perspective. Um, so it's, it's a very technical concept uh, where you look at key performance indicators. So for example, in a video service, you look at video loading times, um, but it's not really clear how these um, key performance indicators relate to the user's actual experience. And so quality of experience is... Um, Uh, from the user perspective. And here uh, we look at the degree of delight or annoyance of the user. And this is actually um, a standardized uh, terminology um, within the ITUT since uh, 2016. And so the difference really is with quality of experience, we want, to, we want to know what the user is thinking, but we also want to be able to measure it um, automatically. And so this is very, uh, a very challenging uh, topic. So 
What is one of the challenges that we are facing today? Um, it's actually that basically everything is encrypted nowadays. So uh, whenever you are streaming video over the internet, um, as you can see on the right hand side, um, basically all the data, the video data, but also the data that is sent back from the client to the video provider is encrypted with HTTPS. Um, and that means if you are an ISP or if you are a third party who wants to monitor what is going on, uh, you can only see the encrypted traffic um, at a very low network level. Um, and this has not always been the case. So um, a few years ago, um, there was still a lot of unencrypted traffic. Um, another problem is that if you measure on a device, um, you have um, APIs that are very restricted or they, they are locked. So it's harder to monitor the qualities, for example, from a smartphone. Um, now there are some solutions for that or workarounds. One is that you measure the quality directly at the clients. Uh, if you have, for example, a laboratory where you can um, provide your own clients and then simulate everything. You could also use machine learning to, to estimate the quality from the very low level encrypted traffic. Or you could, for example, use crowdsourcing to get data from real users. And I understand that this is also um, part of this seminar series where you have some talks on, on crowdsourcing solutions. Now, another challenge is the need for QE models. So this is what we have seen in the talk before, um, what we saw as synthetic MOS. So um, we want to predict QE based on algorithm. Um, so we don't want to ask users how they think the quality is, but we want to input some uh, measured data. And as an output, we want um, QE. So we want a mean opinion score, uh, a rating of the quality. And the problem with that is that we have a very rapid development of new technologies. So for example, adaptive streaming, which is typically used for video these days, um, is done via MPEG Dash or Apple HLS. And there are new video codecs released now, uh, such as AV1. And um, whenever you measure a service like this, um, you need the QE model that fits this service. And so you need a good QE model as well. Um, uh, and a good QE model means that it is one that can be used in practice um, so that uh, you actually have all the data that you need to run the model. And one that is also up to date with the technology. So you cannot use um, a model that, for example, has not been developed for a particular video codec. Um, and so this is really a challenge, especially for standardization organizations like the ITUT, um, to develop such models and to develop them quickly um, so that the market can actually use them. Uh, and uh, this is what we are doing at ITUT basically all the time to try to come up with some models. Now, I would like to give you an example of how to use such a model um, in practice. And um, here we want to uh, investigate YouTube. So we want to know what is the quality of YouTube when I have a very limited bandwidth. Um, so for example, we are in a country where some um, connections are very low bandwidth and we want to know what typical YouTube quality are users getting. Now we cannot measure this from the network traffic because it is encrypted. Um, and let's assume we do not have crowdsourcing. Um, so we um, propose a laboratory setup where we have a PC that measures YouTube automatically. And then we artificially limit the bandwidth um, to simulate a bad network connection. And then we analyze the performance and QoE of YouTube. Um, and as a result, um, we can uh, develop a model that predicts the performance and QoE of YouTube simply based on the bandwidth. And so we will know what does the user get on average, for example, if he or she only has three megabit per second um, bandwidth. And this has been published in a paper, which you can see on the right. Um, and you can see a list of references in the end. Now, um, here's our setup. 
um, it's it's um, it looks complicated, but it's actually very simple. Um, in as a central point, you have Chrome as a browser, and the browser downloads video data from YouTube via a traffic shaper, uh, and of course through a router. Um, and the traffic shaper determines the bandwidth that is available to the client. And we have a script that controls this traffic shaper. Um, and in the end, we collect all the measured data um, and analyze it later on. And we did these uh, measurements over the whole summer. Um, it was actually two years ago. And uh, so it's many thousand measurements that we did with different bandwidths um, to get an idea of the quality of YouTube. And here is an example of the analyzed key performance indicators and QE. So the most important key performance indicator is the initial loading delay, meaning the time from loading the video until it actually starts to play. This is really the most important KPI because this long initial loading delay causes users to abandon the stream. So when the delay is long, people abort the video and they are very annoyed. Another uh, KPI is the, uh, the quality chunks. So we want to know how long was a certain level of quality played out. So was the video shown in low resolution or was it shown in HD resolution? And of course we know that users want to see uh, HD resolution while playing YouTube. And finally, uh, we want the overall mean opinion score or MOS. So this is the quality according to the QE model uh, and it reflects the general opinion of the user. Now, how is this MOS calculated? Um, in typical video streaming, you have uh, different versions of the video at the server. We call it adaptation set. And we have, um, while playing it, different switches between the quality depending on your bandwidth, including initial loading and maybe stalling uh, where the video stops. Uh, and there is a, a model from ITUT, which is called uh, ITUT P1203. Uh, and it's a standard for video streaming QE. And it combines everything that is happening um, while streaming. And the result is the mean opinion score and some info about what happened. And when we apply this uh, measurement, we see um, different results. Um, I want you to just focus on the curve in general. So ignore the, the case and the, the red and blue lines. But you can see that depending on the download bandwidth, the initial loading delay uh, can be very high. So if you have one megabit, then the video loads between five and 10 or 12 seconds. Uh, if you have three megabits, um, the loading time is below five seconds. And the higher your bandwidth is, the lower the initial loading delay is. Another uh, interesting result is when are you going to see HD video? Um, and we see that if you have a download bandwidth of three megabits or more, um, you will actually start seeing mostly HD 720p video. And if you have a bandwidth of eight megabit or more, most of the video will be in 1080p HD video. So this is a, a very simple um, answer. Basically you need uh, three megabit or more to watch HD video. And finally, uh, we look at the QOE. So the mean opinion score um, of the video depending on the download bandwidth. And here you can see uh, that also um, if you have a bandwidth of more than three megabits, um, your mean opinion score will be four or higher. And of course, the higher, the better. Um, but it's very interesting to see that the QE is not a linear function of the bandwidth. So if there's one important message that I would like you to remember is that um, the relationship between, for example, download bandwidth and the quality that the user gets is not a straight line. So it, it is very complex. Um, it's a complex function because there is so much happening while streaming video and you need a good QE model uh, to predict what is going on then. So to conclude, um, quality of experience looks at how users perceive a service, whereas quality of service 
is a more um, technical concept where we look at key performance indicators. But if you have advanced QE models, you can predict QOE using different key performance indicators. And the challenges these days are that you have encrypted traffic, which makes it hard to measure the quality that the user gets if you are outside of the system, basically. And that you need valid and good QE models for the service that you want to measure. And this is the, the challenge that standardization bodies are facing today. And the solutions are various, but um, for example, if you have a laboratory where you can simulate measurements, uh, you, can, you can actually simulate what the client is going to receive. Um, or an alternative would be to use crowdsourcing to get similar data. So this was just a, a very brief um, spotlight on, on some of the research that we are doing um, and how to measure QOE from a client perspective and from a user perspective. Um, I have uh, added some references in the end if you want to read some papers. Uh, otherwise, thank you for uh, your attention. I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Verna. Uh, and thank you uh, for these two very interesting lectures. Thank you, Luis. Uh, in fact, there have been reviewed several important topics on the challenges to be faced in monitoring quality of service in future telecommunication networks.